Good morning guys. Yes, you're on the right channel. It's Gary and Gage. Actually, we're doing bushwalking with Gary and Gage today. I'm running a couple of experiments as well. The new look. See, I'm literally two months overdue for getting a haircut. So experiment number one is going to be, can we take Dirty Pirate and go long enough, you know, if this continues long enough, do we come out the other side as a young, handsome Johnny Depp? I'm not sure. That's experiment number one. As we walk, I will enlighten you on experiment number two. So today we're filming on the A6600 again. The only reason for that is because it makes my face look slimmer. <laughs> no. Some of you have noticed. One person commented, because I did start a diet two weeks ago, and they said, wow, you look thinner already. No, it depends on which camera I use, guys. Maybe it's the teacher in me, but I'm also gonna point out the eight to 10 inches of snow which are still behind me in the video as I walk through the bush. Somebody made a comment on the channel the other day saying, that's not snow, light a fire on it, it won't melt. I have no idea what the comment was about. I'm telling you guys, there's eight to 10 inches of snow behind me in the bush. If we light a fire on it, yes, it will melt. There is a hard packed crust on top of it because we've had a couple of freeze thaw cycles, but it's still snow and it's still there and it is meltable. So this Bushwalking with Gary series is really just a continuation of our Surviving Together series, which is where we just discuss things that help us get through these COVID, in this case, COVID times, or it could be whatever is going on in the world. And yes, here we are a year later, and we are still going through COVID times. Hopefully coming to an end here in the next month or two as vaccines roll out across the country. Uh, I still don't have my shot. And I work in the healthcare profession, so apparently I'm higher on the list than some people, but I still haven't gotten one, so I don't know what the failure there is. But I'll tell you guys, I'm ready to start traveling and just getting on with my life at this point. So hopefully, so my mother actually works uh, as a, like a VON type person where she goes into older people's houses and they do daily visits. And she doesn't have her shot either. She told me that last week she had three COVID tests. I don't know what this is costing us, um, you know, testing these workers. Why? I don't understand. I know another guy who works at the hospital. He's a janitor. He's had his shot. My mom works with old people <laughs> every day. Um, it, makes no, it makes no sense to me, the rollout here, what they're doing. Gage, what are you doing? He's digging at something there, I don't know. Do you need a minute, buddy? <laughs> Apparently he does, he keeps going back. <laughs> What's in the hole, I don't know. Not much, probably a stick. We could call this series Ranting with Gary, I don't know, I, I seem to have a lot of things I like to, well, it's, I don't know, is it a, is it an intellectual state, you know? If you have the wherewithal to think of these things, they make you angry? I don't know. I don't know why some people don't get affected at all. Makes me angry. I worry about my mom, first of all. I mean, who wouldn't, right? But then you also have to worry about all these old people that she works with. It's simple common sense. Does the guy pushing the mop through the general hospital need it more than somebody working with old people? I would say no. You know, let me know if I'm wrong, guys, in the comments below. This is just Gary's train of thought the way I think things through logically. The same thing is going on right now uh, on the news that was last year. Partiers and spring break down in Florida. All your young people were out there coagulating on the beach, causing a virus stew of some sort. But they were saying maybe, possibly, I think it's 17 to 20 percent or something like that of your population has now received the vaccine in the states that they're hoping they're not going to have this skyrocket again in uh, covid cases 
I think you guys have leveled off for the last week at 60,000 cases a day. That's, that blows my mind, that's crazy. It's crazy bad. But they're like, oh, it's a good thing that, you know, you, you're actually leveled. So I guess, okay, 60,000 a day to me sounds terrible, but leveling, I guess, is better than uncontrolled climbing. A little bit of manscaping and this guy might hit the beach himself. I'm pretty tempted after a year of this life. Uh, we have it pretty good up here, as you guys know, right? <laughs> the bush around here is magnificent. No people around to bother Gary. Just his dog and Gary out on the trail. Most of the time, that's how I like it. But, the older I get, I mean, I do like to share experiences with other people. It's like that kid who went off into the wild. I think the movie was called The Wild. And he wrote in the book at the end, you know, life is not worth living if you have no one to share it with. You can go on the most fantastical adventure, and if you're not sharing those experiences with somebody, it's not the same. Got some trees we're gonna have to clean up on the trail. The second experiment, I know again, most of you women aren't gonna agree with this, the premise behind this. The guys will go, hell yeah, hell yeah, that's worth checking out. You know, this is a good worthwhile experiment. My Kamek boots. They were new last fall. So after a whole winter of trekking through the swamps with you guys, Wet feet, sweaty feet, whatever else, wood chips from cutting wood, whatever, it's all still in there. Now we could take out the liners and wash them, right? But what, that's not an experiment. The experiment is, they're starting to smell a little funky, a little moldy, a little whatever. I don't know what's going on down there. If we continue to wear them long enough, will we come out the other side and they'll start to smell better? That's experiment number two. Huh? Who's on board? Should I wash my boots? Gage doesn't think I should wash my boots. Our warm spell disappeared. We had four days unseasonably warm, 15, 16 degrees, and then now we're back down to minus six, seven, minus 20 at night, a couple nights. So everything, it's not fun to, to go out. I, I had the Suron out, as you guys saw the other day, and I was so excited to go again. But you're basically on your dirt bike in a full snowsuit and uh, with a heated visor, <laughs> you know, it's, we're not there yet. I want spring so bad. I actually started parking my truck outside and I parked the Suron inside. It has a whole bay in the garage to itself. I need to build another garage actually, but that's another story on itself. I, uh, the, the whole COVID thing, the costs of building materials skyrocketed here last year, like unbelievable, triple the price for two by fours and just basic building stuff. So a garage, you know, I, my wife and I have different ideas of what we need in a garage, okay? I just want a 24 by 20, bare bones, put up some walls to put my boat, my four wheeler and my stuff inside there because we already have a garage attached to our house, which keeps the vehicles, right? My wife is on call in the middle of the night. She has to go out. She doesn't want to have to go clean snow off her car and wait for... Sometimes she can't afford to wait for the windshield and everything to defrost. She needs to be able to jump in her vehicle and go. So that's fine. Okay. I agree with her on that. The cars need to go in the garage attached to the house. But we disagree on what goes in the other garage. She wants to put in a hole upstairs with rooms for the kids so that when they have friends over, that's where they can hang out. I'm like, nah, uh, uh. Our kids are teenagers now. My youngest one just turned 12 yesterday. So I'm like, no, and the other one's 15. And I'm like, no, I'm not building them somewhere they can go hang out with their friends without parental supervision. That, and I know the old folks who stay in Arizona would be using that as a crash pad too when they come back. And I can't have that. No, sorry, not gonna happen. I got a lot of stuff in sheds. <laughs> We've bought those plastic sheds that uh, they seem to be holding up. They're both about five years old. I actually, I'll tell you guys a funny story. Geez, I hope Home Depot doesn't watch this channel. Normally I would never do this, guys, but this is a case of Crotchety Gary again, okay? I ordered a shed from Home Depot online, 1500 bucks. 
Uh, that was the big shed, the 10 foot shed. And a month later, it still wasn't here. This is way before COVID times, right? This, I built this three years ago. And it took a month and it didn't show up. So I called Home Depot and they said, geez, we have no idea where this shed is. And they said, would you like a refund or would you like to, to wait another couple of weeks? I said, okay, I'll wait. So I, uh, I waited two more weeks, the shed didn't show up. And I said, please have a manager call me. This was on the Home Depot hotline, right? And the next day after I had that conversation, guess what showed up? The shed showed up. I signed for it and everything. It had already been prepaid. And uh, we, we dumped it in the back and I started building. Well, a week later, Home Depot called me back. It was the same woman on the customer service line. She said, geez, we can't find this shed. And I said, okay, can I speak to a manager? Because I was going to say, hey, the shed is here. You know, can you give me a discount for it being six weeks time for you guys to deliver this? And she said, we'll have them call you back. Well, guess what, guys? Six weeks later, I never did get a call back. I had the shed. They reimbursed me for the shed, the entire amount, and I'm still waiting for that manager to call me back to tell me that I got the shed. They couldn't be bothered, so I said, I'm not calling them. <laughs> Gary got a free shed out of it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below, is that wrong? <laughs> That's almost as bad as the gazebo. I have a video on my channel showing a really nice gazebo that I built. And I'll show you guys when we walk back to the house, the gazebo. Uh, I bought this thing full price at Costco. And Costco is pretty good, you can return anything. Uh, this thing you'd never be able to return because once you build it, right? I mean, it, it was a two week project. My dad and I built this thing ourselves. And um, in the course of the two weeks of me building that, they went on sale $800 off at Costco. And we had ordered ours online. I paid an extra $200 to have it shipped here because if you look at Costco prices, they say free delivery, but if you go to the store, it's always $200 cheaper if you buy a big item. And it was 200 and some dollars was what it cost to ship it here. So my wife was happening to go to Costco, which is almost two hour drive from here. And I said, bring the receipt and tell them you're gonna, you wanna return it and get the sale price or just get the, get the price reduction because it had only been two weeks since we bought it. And uh, so she went in and they wouldn't let her do that. But she said, you've got one over here on the shelf. She said, I could go buy that one, walk over to the counter and buy it, wheel it over to the returns counter, give you the other receipt and return it and get the money back. And they looked at her right in the eye and said, go ahead and do that. So that's exactly what she did. She said, you're gonna make me take two of your guys to get this thing down with a forklift off the shelf. And they did. It took my wife an hour, but we got the 800 bucks back. I, I was a retail manager many years ago. I quite often in my life I've worked two jobs at a time. And uh, I worked for Black's Photography in Sudbury as the manager. And we dealt with stuff like that. All ridiculous stuff that goes on. It literally would take two seconds for a manager to come and say, that is ridiculous. You're gonna tie up two of my workers for 40 minutes getting this thing down when she has a receipt. She's gonna go to this line, that this line. Like, come, you know, if I was a guy at head corporate, oh. Now you know why they don't have any hair left, right? Because of stupid decisions made by people working at frontline counters. What is the coolest thing that ever happened to you in terms of getting a break on something like that? Or a stupid story where you had to jump through hoops to return something? Let me know in the comments below, guys. All right, ladies, you've spent 20 minutes with me here. Is it starting to grow on you or what, eh? My wife would slap me right about now. There's what you guys wanna see. I know. I know who the pretty of us is. I know who the pretty one is out of the two of us, Gage. I know. He's worse than a kid. So he's carried this a mile back in the bush from our house, and then he just got distracted with sticks and left it there. I guess I'll have to bring it home. Look what I got. Oh, now you want it. Well, you can't carry both. <laughs> you can try. I always like sneaking back through the woods and seeing my house off in the distance. I live in an amazing place. 
So there's the gazebo I was telling you guys about. It does the trick. I can store a couple of things. The boat and four-wheeler will just fit under there together. But I snowplow all winter with the four-wheeler, so it's over there. And there's Gary's shed, full of stuff. Bikes, lawn tractor, my hammock. So you tell me, does Gary need a garage? I think so. I got two sheds, don't forget. This is only one, I've got two sheds full of stuff. That's the ongoing debate, right? Do you want to spend the money on a building that just houses your junk? And I really don't, that's why I haven't built one. Because my wife is kind of right. If you're going to go through the trouble of, you know, building that foundation and it's no extra cost really to put on a second floor and make a loft up there. So, I don't know. I toy with the idea, but I'm just cheap. I don't want to spend 80 grand on a building to house toys and, and stuff. So, <laughs> I spent two grand on a shed instead. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for joining us on a Surviving Together Bushwalk with Gary and Gage. Let me know your comments and thoughts down below. And like I say, any stories you have on anything we talk about, I would love to hear. Thanks for joining us. I'll catch you guys in the next adventure.